Hello everyone, in this episode of Flip Teacher Professional Learning, we're going to give you my top eight ways to use Twitter as a tool for teaching and learning in the classroom. Now, obviously the way that you use Twitter in the classroom is going to differ depending on the age group of the students you're teaching, uh, but these are some ways that you'll be able to use it, uh, generally speaking, across the board. Now, the first thing that I would recommend before we get into that list is that you have a separate account for your classroom use. Separate Twitter that you use as a tool for professional development from the way that you use Twitter as a tool for teaching and learning. There's a number of reasons for this, uh, mainly because the people that you're going to interact with, the tweets that you'll be making uh, as a teacher in your professional learning network are going to be vastly different to those that you'll be making uh, or that your students will be making when you use Twitter as a tool for teaching and learning. So let's get stuck into it. The first way and perhaps the easiest way to use Twitter as a tool in the classroom is to use it to tweet upcoming dates, uh, due dates for permission notes, for excursions, for uh, exams and assignments. Uh, tweet reminders to parents about bringing equipment for um, for excursion or dropping the, the kids off for a, at a particular time or picking them up at a particular time from an excursion. Um, really, really simple and easy way to do that, to get information out there to the parents when they need it, uh, as well as to the students. The second one is to coordinate assignments. Uh, if you set it up so that your students are able to use hashtags uh, when they're in talking to each other about assignments, they don't have to try and wade through an email chain. Uh, they can tweet to each other and coordinate who's doing what uh, on assignments and they can stay in touch with each other that way. It can be a little bit easier to use, uh, I find, um, using Twitter in that fashion than trying to sift through an email chain and keep up to date with the, with the relevant emails. The third one is really great if you've got a kid who's missed out on an excursion for some reason because they might be sick uh, or, or any other reason, is to actually live tweet what's going on. So live tweet and post photos about what's happening, um, share what the students are learning so that the student who's missed out can still feel like they're involved as well um, and that they haven't entirely missed out on, on the opportunity and the experience. Um, the, th the fourth one, this will depend on the age group of the students that you're teaching and on how comfortable they are with technology. But consider using Twitter as a back channel. Now, if you're not familiar with what a back channel is, have a read of, pause here and have a read of this. Um, but Twitter is a really fantastic way of collating questions that students have during a, an explicit teaching moment. Um, and give students an opportunity to see that they're not the only person that has that particular question. Um, back channels are absolutely fantastic, but again, you would need to make a professional judgment about whether that will work in your classroom with your particular age group of students. Uh, the next one is fantastic, and it's one reason why I love Twitter, is that you can connect with other classes all around the world. So you can see here on my uh, Twitter feed at the moment, this is obviously my classroom Twitter account. You can see that there's a couple of tweets from classes in America. They've been engaging with a um, an Odyssey of the Mind competition, and they're able to share some photos and how they're going with that um, with anyone who's following them. It's absolutely fantastic. It's in a way for my students to see that other kids around the world, other classrooms around the world are engaging in exciting and fun things um, and that they're not missing out and they can take part in those as well. <clears throat> Next one is being able to engage parents. Now number one was giving about giving information to parents but engaging parents um, in your classroom gives them through Twitter gives them an opportunity to see what's going on. It turns the walls of your room into glass and gives uh, not only parents, but it gives other family, wider family members, an opportunity to see what's going on. Now, obviously, you do need to make sure that um, you're complying with any legislative um, requirements in your area, um, particularly when it comes to publishing photos of students, um, but it's a fantastic way of allowing family members or students to see what their kids are actually learning, um, so that when they get home, instead of the normal discussion, oh, what did you learn today? Nothing, uh, which I think is what my parents copped every day, they can start the conversation by, oh, I noticed when you uh, posted that photo today, um, talk to me about that. It, it opens up the conversation, give parents an opportunity to see what's actually going on in the classroom. The next one, and this is one that I absolutely love, is that you can use Twitter as a way of collecting exit tickets. So exit tickets are a common way of making sure that students have actually engaged with and understood the concept that was taught in a particular lesson. 
This can take a variety of forms, and I've seen a number of different ways of implementing that, but Twitter is a great way of that, particularly if you use a topic hashtag, um, and you can collect each student's Twitter automatically without having to physically collect something. You can quickly scroll down the Twitter feed. The other alternative to that, but still part of the same idea, is if you are doing a flipped classroom environment, you can use it as an entry ticket. So the student uh, may not engage with uh, the next task until they have submitted their entry ticket, uh, which could be a quick tweet uh, summary of what they've learnt from the flipped content, flipped learning content, um, so that they understand, you know that they understand what the lesson was about and that they can engage appropriately with the following activity. And the last one, and perhaps the most important one, is that Twitter is a great facilitator of having conversations about appropriate digital citizenship and uh, netiquette. It's a fantastic way of having those conversations about um, should we post that photo, should we make that comment, um, why would we not uh, retweet that, uh, or why would we retweet, retweet that. It's a fantastic way of having those conversations about the responsible use of social media and encouraging students to think about what they're actually posting online and to consider their digital footprint um, through the future. Uh, again, there's many, many more ways that you can use Twitter as a tool for teaching and learning. These are just a couple of short ones. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, drop me a line on Twitter, um, but thanks for watching.